Hey guys, it's Wyndham. And I'm here with a broken nail. No, I'm here um, just to kind of talk about some things. You guys tend to like casual talk videos. I don't know how much that you're gonna like this one. Um, and you guys are probably gonna be a little confused why I'm posting this. A little confused why I'm even talking about this. Um, and you might even wonder like what this has to do with anything. And in all honesty, my channel's content has been kind of all over the place and I, I kind of like that. Also, you can't sit in my lap, honey. No, you can't sit in my lap. I don't mind that because it's my channel and I feel like a lot of you guys just like being here for the ride no matter where it goes and I know it's gonna keep transforming but you know it's a it's a constant journey it's a constant ride I feel like a lot of you guys are okay being there um but anyway so I wanted to talk to you guys about something that shoe on head is a great youtuber I love a lot of her content I don't necessarily agree with everything that she says or everything that she posts, but every time she posts a video, I like listening and I really enjoy the way that she presents it. I think she's a lot of fun. And she made a video recently about relationships where she made a statement about nice guys. <laughs> and I've got to say, from my experience, a lot of it is true. And some of you guys might be like, you know, Wyndham, your experience is because you're a girl and blah, blah, blah. But let me just tell you something about being a girl. Let me explain something. And I'm not here to spread my feminist agenda. I'm not here to, you know, completely change your politics or any of that. I'm here to just let you know about something that's kind of a bit of a problem. And it's a little bit of a nice guy, com like a nice guy problem. And it's also a little bit of something that I call a Jim Halpert complex, where you don't handle being friends with a girl well. You don't, you don't handle it well. Sit think about that for a second. The reason this is even a topic, the reason that this even came up um, for me, I mean, yeah, I've dealt with it over the years and it's never really been a big deal. But the big reason that this became, for me, a problem was because the second that I announced that I was getting married, people wigged out. Like, a ton of people wigged out. And like, I don't really know why. <laughs> I don't really know why people freaked out. And people weren't just freaking out like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Oh my gosh, like she was so private about her personal life. I can't believe that she didn't tell us. It wasn't that type of freaking out. It was legitimate freaking out like it was sending really mean messages to me from people that had private messaged me like two years ago that had said like hi and I said hi back and they asked about what type of video I was doing next and I just kind of responded but it was never like they weren't like a super good friend of mine on Instagram I got a really rude message from some people saying like how did you know I didn't even know you were dating anyone and you let us all have this expectation that you were single I mean I did I was for I was single for a really long time <sighs> but I also found out that people that were close to me apparently had feelings for me and never told me about it and then they got really sad when they found out I was getting married. That's not my fault. <laughs> and then there were people that I didn't even know very well that decided to just 
freak out to other people that it, it did come back to me. Just know that if you probably freaked out about it and you have a mutual contact, I probably know that you wigged out. And I'm sorry, but it was insane. And I just haven't talked about it because I didn't really necessarily feel like it should be talked about, but I'm gonna address it now. Because I post videos, that doesn't mean that I have to share everything about my private life, first of all. It doesn't mean that you guys have to know everything about me. If you guys wanna get to know me better, you know, I've got some pretty good people that I've gotten to know through this, you know, like Jay Sinky is one of the people that, you know, I, I feel like he knows a little bit more about my personal life than the majority of people, but also like he's earned my trust and he's been around pretty much since the beginning. Um, Renegades, a lot of them have my trust. A lot of other people I've made videos with and, you know, obviously Octo, a lot of my mods. They know a bunch of my, about my personal life. But the thing is, is like, yeah, you guys didn't know that I was dating anyone. We decided to get married relatively quickly just because we'd been friends for a while and we just saw that we'd make a good team. But that shouldn't matter. I shouldn't have to apologize to you for living my life. I shouldn't have to apologize to people for getting married and having a personal life that you don't know about because you watch me on the internet. I shouldn't have to apologize for making adult decisions. And just because you had feelings for me but never told me about it doesn't mean that I'm the bad person for going off and getting married. And I think it all stems from a place of this idea of a nice guy syndrome that, oh, this girl, I like her. If I'm just a nice guy, if I'm just nice to her, she'll see what a great guy I am. And then it'll be all rainbows and butterflies and, and happy ever after. And I'm sorry, but that's not the way that the world works. You can't just expect someone to drop all of their dating preferences because you're nice to them. You can't expect someone to drop the relationships that they have with other people because you're nice to them. And I'm, I've been there. I've been there. I've been that person. I'm not saying I haven't, but being nice to someone and complimenting them a few times on the internet and being a casual friend and never telling someone your feelings doesn't give you a right to criticize them when they enter into a relationship. It is not their fault if they go in and they continue on with their lives and you never said anything. How are they supposed to know? I feel like this is definitely a Jim Halpert complex. People always want to talk about, oh, I just want to be a Jim. I just want to be a Pam. They, they talk about that. But the thing is, in reality, Jim was kind of a butthead, okay? He's kind of a butthead. He had a crush on her for like five years. He even talks about how, like yeah, she's been engaged for a while, but I'm pretty sure he knew her when she was just dating Roy. Pretty sure Jim knew Pam. And instead of telling Pam from the beginning how he felt about her, instead he, and again, again, I've been here and I've been a manipulator and I've, you know, misuse people's trust and friendships. I've done the same thing and I'm telling you, you have to stop. I'm telling you, you can't come into someone's life when they're dating somebody else or when they're with somebody else with this fake friendship, hoping that by you being nice to them and being in their life consistently as a friend that they're going to be romantically interested in you. That is girlfriend zoning a person that is not actually enjoying the company and the friendship of a person, and it's not okay. And I've had to learn that. I've been there. But like you can't put your expectations of a relationship on someone else because you think that you've been the nice person. You're like, I deserve a relationship because I'm a nice guy. 
they should see what a nice guy I am. They should see what a nice girl I am. And so they owe me a relationship. No one owes anyone a relationship, honestly. And you've got to leave that expectation of other people at the door. Because even when you have both people consenting to be in a relationship, it's just as hard. <laughs> and sometimes it feels just as lonely even when you're in a relationship. Like, you can't just have all these expectations that your world is gonna be better and different if you just get this girl to go out with you, if you just get this guy to go out with you. Like, that's not how it works. But it also doesn't work that you can just sit here and manipulate their feelings as a friend and when they don't reciprocate, you completely take away that friendship. That's not okay because you basically let them trust you as someone that would always be there, someone that they could trust, and then you just take it away. I mean, if you let your feelings known and then it just so happens that you guys can't go over the hurdle of realizing your feelings and then you leave, that happens. But you can't be a gym. You can't give someone your friendship for several years and then when they don't give you a relationship that you want, completely just leave them in the dust and go away. That's manipulating feelings, that's manipulating time, it's manipulating their sense of self, their view of the people around them. And again, I've been there and I've had to learn, but you can't be a gym and you can't be a martyr for love. You can't be the person that listens to all of their relationship crap, hoping that they'll see that you're this awesome person and that they should choose you. It's not realistic. Let go of it. And if they're meant to realize what a great person you are, they will. And if not, then it's their loss. But you can't keep holding on and like almost like holding your friendship hostage. Like if they won't be with you, then you're just gonna take away your presence altogether. It's not cool. <laughs> But in all honesty, guys, like, stop treating people like that. Stop girlfriend zoning or boyfriend zoning people. You and the other person will get hurt. Stop not sharing your feelings for like years and years and then getting hurt when they decide to move on, because that's not fair. And it makes you bitter towards a person that is probably pretty great. And also don't think that you have control over people on the internet's relationships and then get butt hurt when they decide to be with someone other than you when you've talked to them twice. That happened a lot. <laughs> You'd be surprised. But anyway, um, in the meantime, I had someone message me and they said, what are your tips for making a relationship work? And they said that they were in the fifth grade Okay. <laughs> First of all, I don't really necessarily super agree with people being in the fifth grade and being in a relationship. I don't really agree with that. But I would say the best thing that you could do for relationship a relationship tip is to treat other people the way that you want to be treated. And, you know, if you find yourself giving of yourself and giving of your time, giving your emotions, giving your of your affection, most likely you're gonna be receiving it back. And there's no reason to hold things hostage. There's no reason to be like, oh, well I gave you two hours of my time, so you deserve to give me two hours of your time. Don't do that. <laughs> be selfless and treat someone else the way that you wanna be treated. Be understanding, be patient, um, be kind. Be encouraging, you know? Be that person's best friend and their cheerleader. When you have a best friend, what makes you feel really good that they do, what makes you feel really appreciated, and you just make it slightly romantic, and there you go, there's a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Boom. Um, also, I would say learn 
the other person's love language. You know? If they really appreciate time, drop your cell phone and spend time with them. If they really enjoy physical affection, then make it a point to hold their hand every time you leave the house. Hold their hand in the car, hold their hand at the movies, it makes a big difference. Their love language is acts of service. You know, start learning how you can help them out. Maybe they need help studying for a math test or a Spanish test. Maybe they need help writing a paper. Don't write the paper for them. But maybe they need help writing a paper and you could add, you could read over it and you could proofread it. You know, if their love language is words of affirmation, write a poem, write a song, write them a sweet note and leave it on their car. And if their love language is giving gifts, well, get them something that they would really like. <laughs> But um, anyway, so there are some thoughts that are a little negative, thoughts, some thoughts that are a little positive. Um, I apologize for my house being a mess. I usually clean on Sundays and so I haven't cleaned this morning yet. <laughs> but anyway, um, sorry if this offends anybody, but you guys need to learn that real people exist outside of the internet and people have feelings and Start being honest with the people in your life. Be honest with them, be genuine, be kind. And stop holding people hostage with your own expectations of what should be, because you might think that you know best for them, but in reality, you don't. So, anyway guys, it's Wyndham. Um, I've got a few more videos that I'm editing. So, anyway, all right, I'll talk to you next time.